Hi, welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. One of my most successful videos was how to sync two SharePoint lists with each other. It was so successful that I continued and then create another video based on the same concept, but then I also showcase how you can sync also the attachments on those SharePoint list items with each other. So now I received a question on how we can uh, sync two SharePoint list items into one single row in a third SharePoint list item. So imagine it like child list one, child list two, they enter data about the same maybe uh, person and then but it's different data. Huh? So and then that needs to flow into the same SharePoint list and into the same row because it's the same person. But from the first list, maybe some columns are populated and then for the, from the second list, uh, in as, uh, from the data from the second list comes in and then populate some other columns in that same row. It sounds complicated, but it's not. So if you like the concept and if you like the video, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and that you like the video. And uh, yeah, let's see how we can do that. Have fun. Okay, so first of all, we need to make sure that we have our SharePoint lists in place. So what I've done is I created two SharePoint lists, child one and then child list two, as you can see here, this one and this one. And then we have our master list where the data from two lists is going to flow into. And um, to do that is um, a special column needed because we need an ID, which it comes from the child list one and also from child list two, and then it searches in the master list if that item already exists. And if it exists, then it will update it. If not, it will create a new one. So in this case, it doesn't matter from where the child list or from where the item is created. In this case, you can create from child list one or from child list two. And if it's already there, then it will update that row. If it's not, it will create it first. But this master ID should be the same from both sides, from when you enter it in the child list one and also in the child list two. Otherwise, it will not be able to find that item. So in this scenario, you uh, manually give it that this ID. So you need to double check if that ID already exists or not. Maybe it's a better way to do it. Maybe you have like another system in your in your organization where you have like a like a um, other ID. You don't have to put a number. You might have, for example, if you if you flow data from different um, uh, SharePoint lists uh, for an employee, for example. Maybe that employee has an ID. No, of course, if they will have an ID, so you can use that. And that's all that's unique for that employee. Or maybe you can use a last name, but that's that can also be the case in huge companies that they have uh, different people with the same last name. So find your best way to do this. No, in this case, is uh, my uh, simple master ID. Okay, so as I said, child this one, child this two, the share on this look exactly the same to uh, improvise or to uh, simulate the um, different data coming in. I'm going to use from the child list one, the ID and the link, and from the child list two, the ID and the link as well. That's why in the master list, you see here, except of ID and title, and also the general here, master ID, first name, last name, phone number, and email, which is the same like here. You also see the child list one ID and the child list one link. And the same for the child list two ID and the child list two link. So now let's see how we can do this in Power Automate. Okay, so now we are in my Power Automate web client and I'm going to select here create and um, I'm going to say automated cloud flow. This will be child one to master list demo. Let's call it like that. And uh, we want to see here when items create or modified. Click create. And then we need to fix this connection first in, uh, by selecting the site address and the SharePoint list name of the first child item or the first child list. And um, yeah, so what we need to do next here is, let's click here, show all. And no, that's it here. We have the trigger, no? So now we need to get the items because we want to check if uh, the item already exists. Get items and again, place our site and our list. And here in the get items, we have this show all option to see the rest of this uh, yeah, advanced filtering. And here in the filter query, we need to see that, uh, where are my lists? Where are my lists? Where are my lists here? So we need to see here 
if our uh, massa ID from the child one is equals the master ID in the master list. And if yes, it will update. If no, it will create. No, we know that. But that's the comparison we need to do first so that we can see if that item exists or not. And here in the get items, as I said, filter query, we need to take the dynamic uh, master ID from our trigger and then compare it equals with EQ to our uh, column value in the master list. But since that's not dynamic, of course, we need to put it here, master uh, ID. So it looks into that query and it gets the values from the master ID column. Okay, so now we should be able to filter that query. And next we, not, we want to add a condition, condition and say here in the condition that we want to see the length. I've already prepared this, save some time. And I'm going to write it here in this expression box. And here you can see what we're doing. So let's see, is it big enough? Yeah. So in the, um, so we use the outputs from this get items and we grab the values you know, so from the body, the values. And then we count or we measure the length. So we count the items which are in there. And um, that function goes into the left hand side of the condition. And then we compare it if it's equal to zero. So with this new designer, I've had some troubles just writing zero there. So for that reason, I go into the uh, function box here and I write zero. That's it, click add and then it enters it like a function. I don't know why, I don't know why. In the, in the old one, it used to work with just writing this zero. Okay, but um, yeah, so I hope they will fix it someday. So we have the condition now. And if it's true, so that the length is zero, it means that the item is not there, we want to create a new item, create item. So uh, there it is, create item. Let's select here again my Shepherd site and then also the list. And this time we want to create in the master list, of course. So this will load now the fields. We see here 0 for 11, click show all. And I'm going to select here the dynamic data coming from our um, when an item is created or modified, because that's the place where the item was created. So we grab the title, we grab the master ID, we have the first name, the last name, the phone number, and oops, and come on, the email address. Sometimes it's not there. As you can see here, you say, oh, where's my column? But uh, yeah, with this new designer, you can, they, they, they have like grouped it and um, make it a bit shorter. So you need to keep an eye for this see more option here. I mean, you, you see that you can click it because the hand pops up when you hover above it. But uh, yeah, take it to keep that in consideration. So here we should have our email. And now what I meant with data come from the first child list and the data come from the second child list, you can see here we have these columns. And because I'm writing data from child one list to master, I want to write here the data that's going to come from this SharePoint list. Again, ID and link is just because I wasn't too inspired to write any crazy columns coming from two different uh, lists. I'm just taking the basic, uh, what, the basic columns that are, that are already provided. You imagine more and use other columns, of course. Okay, so I want the ID coming from when item is created or modified, and I want the link to item from when item is created or modified. That's it. And this ones, of course, will leave it empty because these are going to be populated from the second list. Okay. And um, so the create item site is done, and now we move to the false site where we update because the, M the string is not empty. So the collection which we get is not empty. Okay, so let's search for update item. And again, site and list. We want to update in the master list and the ID. So it's of course, it needs to know an ID from for, for which item to update. It's come from our get items. 
Now this is going to create an for each loop because it might con uh, contain more than one items. Okay, let's open the update item action here. And again, this is the same story now we edit. So let's write here the title. So now let's, let's, let's take a step back because this is again, based on your um, based on your uh, on your use case and scenario. Because if you create an item in the first list, then you write it, then again, you go into the first list and you want to update it. Do you want to update all of them? Or maybe you want to update only specific columns? And this is the place where you choose that, right? Because you have the ID, so you can now choose which columns to update. Maybe you want to update, I don't know, uh, maybe the phone number, or maybe this data here, which is no, the, the, the part with its, the extra data. So, so you would only populate these two fields here. So keep in mind that the update part, you need, you need to give it a little bit more thought, you know, what you want to update. In my case, I'm going to write again the whole story here. So I'm going to grab the title, the master ID, of course, the master ID is something that you need, because if you change that, then later, uh, you will not be able to find that item to update it. So keep in mind, the master ID needs to stay the same. So it will be even better to not change that all. So then we have uh, the first name, the last name, the phone number, and again, click see more, and you have the rest of the columns. And here's where we update the extra columns, right? So we have here the ID from that um, item, and then it's link, link to item. Okay, so this should be our first flow, actually, that's it. Okay, so let's click save. And let's move on with the second flow. So we are back now in the flow editor in the browser, let's click new flow, automatic cloud flow, give it that oops, that name that we prepared, this is child two to master list. And then it's the same story when items created modified, actually, we could even duplicate that flow. But anyways, I'm going to speed this up because it's exactly the same. And uh, yeah, have fun. Okay, so here we are at the part where we uh, create the item. And as you can see, I'm of course not going to use these two columns because the data now is coming from the second child list. So I'm going to populate these ones. Here again, we're leaving master ID empty because we are updating now. So we don't want that to be changed. And again, we are updating the last two columns here because those are the ones coming from the second list. The ID and the link to item. Okay, so I think we have now completed our workflow concept. So next, now we have to test it out. So how we're going to do that is I'm going to create an item in this in the first item uh, in the first child list. So let's click test manually test. And let's go to the sharpen list. And in the first list, I'm going to create new item test one. Yeah, the phone number that one email that one. Test. So let's give it a master ID of, I don't know, 15, doesn't matter. And click Save. So the flow now is running. And it should create that new item in the master list it might take a while, you know, to provisioned. Let's see. 
Okay guys, so my flow failed because I made a terrible mistake. Remember when I said here we need to do a get items so that we can see if the item already exists in the master list? I wrote here the child list. So here in the first flow, the child list one and the second one, the child list two. So apologies about for that. You need of course to write the master list so that we can see in the master list if the item created from the child list exists or not. So I just fix that and then let's test this out again. As you can see, twice failed. Let's click on test. And this should now run successfully if I did not make another mistake. Okay, so it did not find the uh, item in the master list as it shouldn't and it created a new item. So now if we check in the list, we have here the item creating the ch child list one. And let's see in the master list, we have that element. No? And as you can see here, the um, extra data that we are writing is the child list ID and the child list one link. You can have here 20, 30 columns coming with other data, doesn't matter. So, okay, so now the, the, the um, important part is if it will work, if we create now another item, but in the second list. So we have the master ID 15 and that's something that we need to keep in mind so that Power Automate is able to find this, um, yeah, this element. So let's go to the child list to master list demo and let's set here to test. As you can see, there's no automatic because I haven't tested yet. Click test and I'm just doing this to make it a bit faster, but you don't have to, of course. Okay, so let's go to the second uh, list and then create here some data. Let's create new um, demo or test one. I think it's the same one, right? It should be the same one. I mean, this, this whole uh, use case scenario, you need to uh, make it a bit more, um, yeah, make, make more sense, but the tech behind it, as I'm showing you, it will, it will work. So, Let's assume that this is the same person, so the base data should be the same. And let's write here this on that one. And we have here the phone number one, two, three, four, five, six, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, four. The email was some crap like that. And then test. Okay, so the master ID was 15. And that's it. Let's click save. Let's take a look, Power Automate in the background. Should receive now the flow or the request. Okay, so we are back in the old designer because I had to refresh a couple of times. And yeah, it looks like it ran successfully. It's uh, updated, so it looks like it found an item as it should, right? We have already created it. So let's see now in the SharePoint list um, this is our second child list and then in the master list if we refresh we should not have a second entry but we have the same entry but this data now has been also populated. So as you can see it works this is how you then flow uh, data from two SharePoint lists into one but also in one single row. Easy and simple. I hope you liked it and if you did so please make sure to subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, I hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up and catch you on the next video. Bye, have fun.